I love what I get to do for a living, which is to interpret the words of others into another language. I work in English, Spanish, and Portuguese, and, and the fact that I get to do this great job has meant that I've had some fantastic experiences. I've met some amazing people, and I've found myself sitting at the table in the middle often of two very important individuals who have very important things to say. And I have to sound professional. I have to sound like I have total mastery, total command of both of those languages. I work in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Most of the time, my work is actually uh, conferences where you'll have thousands of people in an auditorium. There'll be a speaker up at the podium and the speaker will be speaking either English, Spanish, or Portuguese. And my job, along with my colleague, who is seated next to me, in a booth, our job is to interpret everything that speaker says simultaneously to the audience in whatever language they need to hear it in. But an interesting thing has happened over the years, and that is that I noticed that more and more people come to these conferences speaking English. They come from all over the world. And every year, it seems like fewer and fewer people benefit from our services as interpreters. I noticed that. I also noticed that I have more and more people out in the audience because we look, you know, we're out there looking to see who is, who is actually benefiting. We call them our customers. How many customers do we have? listening to our interpretation. And sometimes we'll see somebody out there that will put the headphone on, like they're going to use our services, and then they go, no, they take it off. And they try to listen to the speaker, and then before long they put it back on, and then they take it off. And Those are people who do speak English, obviously. They, they have some command of English, but they are frustrated. In fact, what, I've no, what I notice over the years is that in every multilateral, multinational environment, in every global business team, English becomes more and more the common language that is spoken. So over the years, I've noticed that there's this growing universe of, of highly skilled professionals who have a lot to contribute. They are talented, experienced, educated, and they bring to the table a wealth of knowledge that now they must deliver in English. But I see them frustrated. Their English is just not professional enough to really bring to the table all of the wealth of experience and knowledge and education and training and talent that they have. Another way I see this is that when I do a conference, when I'm working at a conference, Every time there's a coffee break, every single time there's a coffee break, somebody will come and tap on the interpretation booth and they'll ask for me to step out and they'll introduce themselves and they'll talk about and they'll thank us for how, what we do. And, and then they always ask me two questions. The first question is, how do you do that? How do you listen to somebody in one language and then interpret it into another language? And I don't know how to answer that question, not fully. It's something that our brain is able to do. I talk about it some in my courses, but I can't explain it. Which leads them to the second question. What can you recommend for me? I want to improve my English, but I don't know what the next step should be. Now, these are people who speak high intermediate or advanced level English. And I have noticed that the, this universe, once again, of professionals who have studied English, they've made lots of sacrifice, they've come a long way with their English, but they feel like they are hitting up against some sort of a ceiling. There's some sort of a, of a roadblock that stops them from progressing with their English as they know they should if they plan to compete in the professional world. That led me to begin thinking about the plight of so many professionals who need to improve their English to a professional level. And I began to realize that we have, we're connected in some ways. I feel connected with those bilingual professionals because I live with 
one foot in one language and the other foot in my native language every day. And so do they. And so I began to think, well, the tools that I use, because obviously as interpreters, we have to sound professional in all of our foreign languages, and we have some tools that we use to achieve that professionalism in our communications. And so I began to think, what if I were to share some of those tools with these professionals who so eagerly want to improve their own English language skills. Well, what I began to, to realize about advanced English speakers is that, in effect, they have reached a maximum level. It's hard to go any further than high intermediate or advanced English by going to school. I know that because I studied French when I was living in Europe and I got to the B2 level and I could get by in French, I could converse in French, but there was not much offered to me that would take me to fully being fluent in French. And I began to think of it like this. Anyone can learn a language to the intermediate or advanced level through memorization. You memorize how to conjugate a verb, you memorize vo vocabulary, you memorize prepositions, you memorize all the rules. And then when you go to speak, you're not really being yourself. You're actually a little motor that's going back and trying to remember, how do I conjugate that verb? What preposition do I use here? What word do I use here? And that sort of memory-driven language hits a max point. Now compare that to a native speaker, your native language. When you speak, your, when you were a baby, you did not memorize the language you speak. You actually built an operating system in, a, in your native language. It's a very different approach to have an operating system in a language than it is to have a memory bank holding a language. And I believe that is what we try to do as interpreters. What we as interpreters do is we have reached a level with our language skills where we actually are fully functional, even culturally functional, in our foreign language, in our second language. And the tools that we use, I believe, will work for those professionals. And so that's why I developed this course that I call Your English A-Game. Your English A-game is really a course in which I teach eight daily habits. Each habit takes three to five minutes to do. You spread those three to five minutes throughout the day. You don't do them all at once. You do one early in the morning, wait an hour or two, do another one, and so forth. And these eight daily habits focus in pairs on four major areas of language. Speech, reading comprehension, writing, and vocabulary building. And then I also teach in this course three essential grammatical elements that I call the three musts that you have to get correct if you're going to speak English well, professionally. And so that's the course I've launched and I've been teaching it now for three years. I've taught it to over 2,500 students in a live seminar setting. It's a six hour seminar that I teach at a couple of universities. And it has been a huge success to the point that I thought, you know, I need to put this into an online form, make it available in video form so that professionals can access it they can work through the courses on their computer or on an app or on their iPad, whatever device they want. And they can take charge. I teach them how to use these tools, how to use them correctly. And if they will do them, what they will find is that their English is going to improve dramatically and quickly because essentially they're taking a quantum leap from that memory, memorization-based language acquisition to building an entirely new operating system for their English. And the results have been outstanding when really all I have done is shared with others what we interpreters do. And so 
for people who are at that level where they just don't know what to do next, this is the best value they're ever going to get. There's no one teaching what I'm teaching in this course. So I guess that if I had words of encouragement that I would share with a professional who's at that point, it's the, those, the words would be this, that you deserve to be heard and you have a lot to contribute. You do have a lot of talent, a lot of skill, a lot of experience, a lot of education, a lot of wisdom. And in this world that we live in today where English is more and more becoming the language we do business in, the language everything happens in, you deserve to be able to sit down at the table and engage the dialogue as a professional. The way I put it is, your English should be as professional as you are.